Do you feel that you're tired of using Lightroom for photography? I've been using it for the last six, seven years and I found that I was looking for a new challenge to edit my photographs and Lightroom wasn't giving me that. Number one, I think ease of use. Um, Lightroom seems to be way more complicated than it should be. Um, I think number two is crashing. Uh, it's just constantly crashing, at least on my computer. Even though I'm using a MacBook Pro, I still find myself um, having having issues with uploading images. Number three for me is just generally a slow software. Um, and number four is interesting. I used to get very used to having my presets done and I would apply them straight away uh, and I'll just edit it a little bit and that will be it. So I find that, yes, there's a lot of profiles which are great benefits as well. Um, there is lens correction and so on, which are also great benefits, but there wasn't that challenge that you um, would get with a new software if you're just starting, which can help you develop as a creator, as a uh, photographer as well. And I think the last point is, is quite expensive. It's getting, I think, when I first started using Adobe, it was, you would get the package and you would just have Lightroom. Um, now with the subscription services, you have Lightroom and Photoshop at the same time, and it's about 20 pounds a month or $20 a month, um, which I think is quite expensive for what you get when you can literally go on your Photos app and kind of make similar edits. Of course, not to this extent, um, and the presets, I think presets, there's so many out there that it feels like they're more or less the same with some small touches that you can, you can use. So hence what made me switch to the killer, I think of Lightroom Photomator. And I think that software, I've started using it for the last, um, probably two months or a month. And I'm absolutely in love with it. The user experience is incredible. The editing process is super easy. It's super easy. Um, the presets are there as well that you can create, which is amazing that it's a new thing and you're challenged to create new ones. It is extremely fast. And most importantly, the organization of your photos as well is gonna be a very, very set up and nicely organized. And you're gonna thank me later when we go through this tutorial. So without further ado, I'm just gonna show you why I think it's a uh, one of the best editing softwares that's ever been released in the last 10 years um, for Apple users particularly because the reason why I think it's a good acquisition what they've done because Photomator used to exist I think it's Pixelmator as well the reason why I think it's a good acquisition is because they're picking up a software Apple and they're creating it some they're creating something big with it and their main competitive advantage is the ease of use with an Apple products and Apple ecosystem and also being able to share your photographs between your phone and your your computer and being able to edit it everywhere so i think i've honestly been absolutely mind blown by the way how easy everything is on it and the way of editing so i'm very excited to show you so let's get right into it and i'll get back into this this is one of the great things about it it's like it's so quick like if you look at how quickly we can change between images it is incredibly fast the way it renders um, so let's go into this image. It's one of my favorite photos I've ever taken and it was on a Sunday um, I was just catching the train from Clapham Junction and I was going a lot to Waterloo to test this camera and this was shot on uh, I believe the Fujifilm uh, X100 uh, V which is the one that I'm shooting the video on so number one is you click on here right and you can already see a, more or less you have the same things as Lightroom um, one of the favorite things is how smooth everything moves so for example let's say we start with the temperature right and we're gonna make it a little warmer we're gonna create right now I have this vision to create a little bit of an orangey look and summer look of this image um, and like pop out a little bit the oranges and kind of make it um, the story of this is about telling people about the everyday life in London right that's a Sunday people are going on the train with their families friends and so on and this girl is sitting here and her face is not shown, which I love. Um, I usually do the temperature by 25 and then you see like exposure. I would expose it a little bit actually, uh, because I want to get a little bit of the sunlight. Most people don't. Um, so here, shadows, I'll get some shadows as well. Look how simple it is to move. 
uh, which I absolutely love. Uh, it doesn't crash or anything. It's like typical, typical Apple. When you think about Apple, that's what you get. Uh, brightness, I'll leave about seven. Contrast, I'd usually do less contrast than more, um, just because I like the smooth look. Black point, I don't usually move it a lot, but for this purpose, just to show you. Boy, texture, you have it as well here, a little bit more. You can add if you want, but I'm gonna leave it off. Clarity, I don't usually touch it. I like to keep the camera clarity. Now, one of the interesting parts about this is selective clarity. So it's it's the most, I think I've never seen it in any other, any other software um, to select where you want to emphasize the subject. So you could do shadows and you see like what we do, we do shadows, right? But say like you wanna take shadows off and you wanna only do mid-tones. So now you're only doing mid-tones everywhere. Now say you wanna do only highlights you want to do highlights. Now, what I use this for, which I recently learned, and I'm going to use it on the weekend, is this look where this light is smoother. When you, uh, people have this dreamy look that you can create, and they create it by just dragging the clarity down on the highlights. And so you can see how it becomes smoother immediately and kind of like dreamy look, right? Let's test it out today. So we're going to do clarity minus 23. Now, as I said, saturation, I'll saturate it a little bit more because I want to get the oranges. And then one of the interesting, of course, vibrance a little bit more, uh, but not too much, actually. Let me drop it a little bit. And then here is the key thing. Like the way you select the colors is so simple, and I absolutely love that, right? It's like on Lightroom, you always have to click through, and it's like very, very complicated. And I remember like you have to click on the color and drag and so on. Here, you just click on this like chart thing. I feel it's called, probably it's a different photography name, but I call it a chart. Um, and you just select, look how much the color is used across your picture, right? So you can see blues, almost nothing, orange is the most. So we're gonna go in oranges, so we're gonna do this. I'm gonna saturate it a little bit. And we can also bring it a little bit, like change the color a little bit if you want to. So what I'm gonna do, I'm not gonna change it, is I wanna keep it natural. So this is it. And in the red ones though, I wanna change it a little bit. I make it a little bit orangey and saturation, probably like this, to get a little bit of the seats as well. Now, one of my most important, one of my favorite things, I think I've said so many things that are my favorite <laughs> overall, but one of my favorite things is the, the wheels here. They are so nice, like the way you click, so you click and then you can just move around like that and it's just so smooth and nice and you can change the brightness here and you can also change like, I think the saturation of it. So what I like to do, I don't usually touch them too much, especially the highlights, I do the shadows a little bit. I want a little bit orangey look. Uh, so we can create a beautiful summer summer image. And here, uh, I would say slightly bit on the yellow side, but I also want to like decrease. No, actually, I'll keep it at about 5%. So I think we're almost there. Just tone curve. It's the same tone curve as Lightroom, but again, faster. Um, that's one of the things. I absolutely love Apple for this reason. Everything is fast on Apple. Even even um, at work, I now request it to have an Apple because I just can't with Windows. It's just constantly crashing. Um, here, you have this. And then the interesting part, one of the things that I think is an advantage is the replacing color. Um, so if you look at, if you wanna really get creative, which I'm not gonna do now, but you can replace the color, for example, of these red seats. And you can say, select the seat. And then you know what? I'm actually going to make it more red or like say like a, a little bit like yellowish. And so of course it picks up another color, but you can always like, um, you can always adjust it and so on. It's like, I feel like this is really cool for skies and all that. Fade, I don't usually add any, but you can if you want. Um, black and white, it completely switches your photo and then it, it helps you emphasize on one on one color if you want. Um, and so you can make your black and white photography incredible. Color monochrome is one of those things as well. You can choose the color and you wanna select for example yellow. And of course now it's like too much intensity but you can make it like this for example. So you can see how much possibilities you have. And then of course, most importantly, LUTs. People use LUTs, they're like presets. Um, which you can do with Portra 400. I've created one for Fujifilm, which I can actually share with you as well. Uh, but it's one of those one of those cool things. So you can create LUTs. You can also put it on videos and stuff. Um, it's essentially like presets, but one of the things about LUTs is when you apply it, you can't really change it that much. But I recently found out, I did not know this, which I'm, I was looking for. They also have presets. 
So here at the bottom of the page, you can create your own preset if you want. So for example, this one, and you can edit it the way you want. I'm not gonna do it now. And you have your custom ones here, for example, I have Red's Film here. I have another one, Autumn, and so on. So you can select black and white and so on, and you can create your own preset. For example, I like this one. And of course, let's continue. I uh, do the grain and usually don't touch it, but if you wanna make it really cool, you can. And you can also sharpen the image, and I think that's really cool. Once you have this, um, you can save your preset if you want by clicking this plus sign, and then you can just like rename it the way you want afterwards. And one of the cool things um, as well is that you can see what you've done before by just clicking this button at the top. And look how simple it is. And then once you are able to um, save your file, before you even do that, what I found that it's super useful for me is when you click on export file and then export, you can put a frame if you want. So a lot of times when you like crop your image and so on, uh, you have to use another software, but if you want to use it like as a frame or like, for example, this one, a film one and so on, and you can also preview it before you even do it. So click on here and it immediately shows. Um, so I find this software to be extremely useful. If you want to see this, um, this image, just go to my Instagram and you'll see it edited there. There you have it. It's uh, honestly one of my favorite softwares uh, to use for editing. And I think I'll purchase the full thing. Uh, as I said, the price for this whole thing is 30 pounds a year. You can also purchase it right off for 120, I think, or 130 pounds, or you could do seven pounds a month or something. It's incredibly well done. Um, it is a really good investment for Apple, and I think Apple can really crush it in the editing space. They already have Final Cut. They have, a, I think, they have um, Logic, and now they have this. I think they're the full package is there. Um, so I think overall, I quite enjoy using it, and I hope you do as well. If you want to see some of my photos and the ones that we just showed today as well, um, you can find me on Instagram. My Instagram is Delian. Uh, underscore GX. Um, I'll just put it in the description below as well. It will be great to connect. And I can also share with you some of the things and presets and edits that I do. Uh, of course, absolutely for free if you need them. Hope you enjoyed this. Thank you so much and uh, happy editing.